Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. So we're doing a special series of podcasts which I'm recording over Google Hangouts. So we're doing audio and video because for some unknown reason, people don't wanna come see me face to face right now. But there's always opportunity and the cool thing is I'm able to now podcast with people from all over the world. So we're gonna get an amazing eclectic mix of people from, from different industries, different perspectives to share their story and tell us you know, their thoughts and feelings on what's going on right now and all of that cool stuff hope you enjoy it please subscribe in all the usual places and enjoy we're live welcome to the podcast and today i'm delighted to be joined by craig pitt um co-founder of white cloud coffee craig welcome thanks us uh, great to be here and you so where, you're in your car <laughs> Yes, it's the uh, it's the only quiet place I can get with some guaranteed uh, sort of peace at the moment with the usual interruptions at home that are going on. Oh, nightmare, nightmare. Has it been working from home? Uh, not too bad. Um, I'm, I've been home based before, and uh, so the transition wasn't wasn't that difficult. But um, we had a bit of fun with it. My business partner and I uh, made a short video to kind of, I guess, you know, poke fun at what's going on. Um, so yeah. yeah, it's 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 not been too bad. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. I'm used to just. I I really like the the, the personal interaction. I love like going and having a coffee or a lunch and like the face to face thing. So it's been quite interesting adjusting. I have to be honest, felt a lot more social now. I'm doing so many video calls and stuff, and just reconnecting with people that I probably should have reconnected with like long ago. It's been quite interesting actually. Yeah, I guess it's it's having more. It's, it's weirdly feels like having slightly more time to catch up with you know former colleagues or you know people who you needed to chat to. Um, yeah. But then some sort of the uh, I was chatting with a, a friend the other day who said the video calls are good, but they tend to be a little bit more inefficient. Yeah, it's quite. Yeah, it's an it is an interesting one. I mean, a lot of people if they're commuting an hour a day, I mean that's suddenly yeah. at least two hours. You're like, wow, back, what yeah. do I do with the next two hours? <laughs> That's been quite interesting. A lot of parents as well, I know you've got some kids that serve I. That's been quite interesting. If you're both working at home, they're not they're off school, yeah. like kind of balancing balancing that. It's quite yeah. hard to actually both of you do a full day's work. Oh yeah, I, I actually think that's not impossible. And I read a yeah. really um it was it was a a thought provoking quote the other day that said, um, a parent, a teacher, and a full time job are three totally different roles. And you know, you can't try and do those three things yourself all on one day because it's just too much pressure. And I think yeah. there's a lot of parents, you know, working full time, trying to homeschool the children and, and play all those roles. And it's it's actually really challenging. So, <laughs> yeah, tough. I spoke to um, I spoke to a CEO um, yesterday, actually, and he, he said to his staff, um, parents, I don't expect you to work more than four hours a day. Yeah, I think that's yeah, realistic, just, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, what's your story? So, elite elite cyclist from New Zealand. Yeah, well, so it goes, awesome. goes back many, many years. <laughs> um, How did you, yeah. like, get into all of that stuff? Uh, so, I started um, swimming when I was about probably eight, nine years old and, and just loved swimming, swam a lot, you know, every morning, every afternoon after school. Um, you know, my dad was a, he was into sport, was a, was a very good sportsman in his own right. Um, and then, so I, you know, I found a love of swimming um, and then discovered triathlons uh, at, at college. But um, gen genetically, I'm not destined to run. So, <laughs> <laughs> no so am I. Know, yeah, whilst being a, a reasonably good swimmer, um, yeah. and, I, and I, I then started to cycle, but I found out that I couldn't run. Um, so through triathlon, I discovered cycling um, and I just fell in right. love with it. Um, and yeah. I think from having a swimming background and the sort of the training and the you know the development of my lung capacity it just it, it all clicked with cycling um yeah and so since the age of about 13 so do you find this the swimming breathing is different though to the the breathing on cycling? Um, a, a little bit uh i mean it's all if you look at the you know like the system it's it's just your cardio system in the body and, and swimming trains a good a good cardio system because you're working that sort of um that exercise level where you're within your lactate thresholds so yeah. the system is the system training is the same the breathing is slightly different obviously because you're having to regulate it more swimming yeah. um but yeah i think it, it just provided a, a a huge foundation for being able to um transition into the sport so yeah yeah 
And did you? And she? How how far did you get in cycling? Um, I ended up. Uh, so I started when I was thirteen and and raced a lot in the kind of junior ranks. Um, and I sort of set myself the goal of of trying to represent New Zealand. And it took me until I was twenty seven, I think, to to get selected for New Zealand. Um, Great. And and there were sort of lots of ebbs and flows, you know, and in, in between all of that, I took a few years off at university and came back to it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was just one of those sort of challenges that I set myself and it took, uh, 15 years to achieve. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. Has it, has it set you up well for kind of business and life, the discipline of getting up early training, Yeah, you know, that kind of like lifestyle? I think so. Yeah. And, and I think it's a, you know, it's a mindset that a, a lot of people who I've met, you know, subsequently who have, um, you know had a chosen sport whether it's cricket or rugby or, or whatever it is and played it to a, a high level you know we all kind of share that you're self-motivated you're driven you set yourself targets and that growth mindset of always thinking there's a, a better way to do something or looking for a different way to do something and um i think you know british cycling have, have coined the phrase of um marginal gains yeah. um and i guess if i look back at what we were doing you know in the kind of mid 90s it was that kind of marginal gains mindset although we didn't call it that um yeah. you know one of our team managers when when we were in our early teens you can't ride open you know like big gears on a bike because it damages your knees so you have a restriction and our team manager figured out that by changing the tires from a 21 millimeter tire to a 19 millimeter tire we could max maximize the gear we were riding and Amazing. you know which gave us an extra i think um, uh, 30 centimeters per pedal stroke which over a race was an insanely you know a big amount little yeah. things like that that yeah and that all translates into you know the, your work culture as you grow up and um and just the way you approach things so i think it does help yeah. a huge amount brilliant and were you competing around the world with new zealand uh i, I only raced within australasia um okay. new yeah. Zealand. yeah there's it's sort of a you know it's a tiered level um, yeah. and they they sort of select teams to race at certain levels and as you progress you get up to obviously commonwealth games and olympic i didn't quite get to that level yeah. um but you know a lot of the guys i was with who were a lot better than me went on to ride for pro teams ride the tour de france um amazing amazing yeah yeah i just watched um well, last year actually icarus you know the um yes the state sponsored russian yeah. doping um stuff i mean fascinating fascinating program and really yeah. eye opening I don't know what, what goes on there yeah and uh, yeah i mean cycling is a um it's a brutally tough sport mentally and physically and uh yeah i think a lot of people who can sit in there on their sofas and and say well you know d doping and sport is is this or it's that um they'd probably struggle to ride to the shops to buy a newspaper um <laughs> you know, yeah yeah let alone uh you know a, 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 even a seven day stage race which was the longest one i ever did you know oh, yeah compound fatigue is something you when you're doing you know 80 100 mile days back to back um you know you wake up on a wednesday or thursday morning and you, you just can barely get out of bed and you're thinking you know gotta get back on yeah and and you know it, there was a realization in one of those races i turned to my one of my roommates and said i kind of get you know how drugs found its way into the sport because it's just so hard yeah um, and then you, you, know, you put the pressure of it, it's people's you know it's, it's their livelihood um and yeah, you know, yeah. if you don't if you don't win you don't earn money yeah you can see what you can easily see why many go down that that path right because your your mindset is on winning right yeah i mean it's not the taking part it's the winning right yeah. <laughs> ultimately and and, and, and and at some point you know you either exit the sport and go find a you know what whatever job you think you can do as a you know having given most of your life over to it or you make a really, really hard choice. I'm not condoning. I never, I never took any drugs at all. Um, but, you know, it's such a hard sport that you can, I can kind of, you know, just, uh, yeah, don't agree with it, but I can kind of yeah. understand some of the mindset yeah. behind it. Yeah. The coffee must have driven you most of the way anyway. Nice cup of coffee. <laughs> yes. Coffee helps a lot. And, and that was my first introduction to it because I never really drank coffee um, until I got into the, you know, the sort of elite level racing and, it becomes it becomes more than just a you know something like a stimulant that becomes the part of your routine four or five hour training rides you have to stop for a coffee and and just chill out for a bit so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. that's cool i'm not not nearly the same level but i've done a couple of like five day cycles 
So I did like uh, around Southwest India and then wow. I did Vietnam to Cambodia. It wasn't a race. It was more like a charity ride. Yeah. Um, but it was still like, you know, 100K a day, getting back yeah. on the saddle. That sounds um, amazing though, riding around that part of the world. Oh, it was great. So we ran, rode around Kerala, so yeah. in Southern India. And it was brilliant. It was because very lush and green in Southern India. And right. I'd not been to India. I just had this image of like dusty, um, yeah. dry India. Anyway, we were right, cycling through these villages in, in our Lycra. And they, I just remember these Indian guys standing on the side of the road, road all like an arm, arm over each other. Like, what? What is going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah. These white white guys in like a surreal image, yeah. The, the puzzling look on their face was like, what is going on? <laughs> um, and it was quite it's quite hilly around there, so it was it was tough. And then um, Vietnam, Cambodia is pretty flat, but great, really great experience. I'd recommend yeah. it to anyone. How, um, how how many people did you did you do that with? So there were about I'd say sixty to seventy. Wow. So it was a really well organized. It was for charity. We raised money, and uh, and it was well organized. And they had little like um, like stops at different temples, and you know, yeah. So it was it was it, you could go like so almost like different stages in a day. And there was always like a group where really competitive, so you could go really hard. Yeah. Or if you want, you could just chill out and have a chat and just cruise a little bit. So it's quite nice. You could kind of dip in and dip out. Yeah. And. Um, but the, I mean, for me, I love, I love moving and being active. I, I run marathons, not very fast, and do <laughs> CrossFit and, and those kind of things. But, but for me and for work, um, I love the the discipline of of sport yeah. and, and the men, the mental side as well. It was really like, it, I really switch off when I'm doing something like that, yeah. whether it's CrossFit or a run or cycle. Yeah, you know, it really helps me cope with the. Uh, I've had that conversation a lot. So I, I sail as well, and and we I crew on a on a couple of race boats out of uh, out of Brighton, and it's that same that it's an all-consuming you know mental approach when you have to be fully focused on what you're doing. So you it allows you to kind of all of the other stresses and worries that you might be dealing with when you're you know racing a bike or you're riding your bike, whatever, or you're or sailing a boat. You have to be fully focused in the moment, and that is uh, it, it. Just sort of frees you up from everything else that's going on yeah yeah it's a massive part of my uh of my routine so when i i started my business 10 years ago and i diarized my exercise like it's the most important meeting yeah. like i'm meeting like the most important ceo i'm never going to cancel i'm not going to be late you yeah. know you turn up early and so I, I put my 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 exercise in like that and then my wife also likes to do exercise so we mix it up the yeah. funny thing is right now is that we're doing uh so my crossfit gym does zoom classes right. so i'm exercising more right now at home than I was before. Yeah, I'm, I got... I'm, I'm doing the same. We're, I'm doing, you know, a class with the kids, um, or we'll do a sort of impromptu stuff. Uh, you know, yeah, do some like I'm doing, spending a lot of time on the trampoline at the moment, which is <laughs> it's really good exercise. So. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. Uh, at what point did you can move over from from New Zealand to the UK? Uh, I came for a, a short kind of two year stint, ninety nine two thousand, and then went back to New Zealand um and then came back again in 2005 so i've been here you know since 2005 so coming up 15 years in in august of this yeah. year great great yeah and then did you get straight into coffee or what, what's been the, the journey no so i've always um i've always tried to combine work and passion together it's you know uh, i'm much more that kind of way where if, if i can so I, I worked for specialized bikes in new zealand there was a company that had the agency for specialized in australasia so um I, so my my at university i studied marketing um so i was very lucky to work you know marketing specialized and avanti bikes in australasia for a number of years before right. coming over here um and you know working for a, a bike company when you're a cyclist doesn't really get much more fun you know <laughs> get the best um, bikes best parts <laughs> exactly yeah and you know i got to work with the r d team and you know they'd develop a new a frame or something and i could take it out and test it and race it and give them some feedback um, which which was good and then came over here um 2005 and again was very lucky to get a job at t-mobile yeah um in their marketing department now t-mobile at the time had a pro cycling team so you know of course i was uh -huh. well aware of that um <laughs> and was there for for a number of years and slowly got to know the sponsorship teams and figured out that the UK team the UK company wasn't actually leveraging the cycling sponsorship that much so I just 
yeah. uh, started to sow that seed within the business. Um, and yeah, o- over a couple of years, we started to activate the pro team in the UK and did some great stuff. Uh, and it kind of culminated when the Tour de France came to London in 2007. Um, and I actually organized all of the team mobile activation around that in London, which was, you know, we did a pub takeover and we gave away, you know, a lot of sort of team mobile caps and all sorts of stuff to the crowds. And, um, yeah, yeah just combining work and passion um, where I can, it's, it's not always, not always possible, but where where I can and I try and do that and ultimately that's how um, having exited kind of corporate marketing uh, a few years ago I sort of had had the kind of time to sit down and go what do I want to do um, for the rest of my career and went well actually you know coffee and cycling are so intrinsically linked Um, I have a passion for coffee anyway you know I've almost got a cafe set up at home (laughs) Um, what do you have in there? Aero uh, Press, V60, Espresso. Uh, I've got a, well, I, I kind of switch between a, a Rocket R58 and a Sage um, Oracle Touch, depending on. And for, know, those, what, for those not in the on. know, for those not in the know, what are they? <laughs> uh, so they're, they're, espresso, they're high end espresso Fine, machines. Yeah. Um, so they've, they've, yeah, so they, they make very, very good coffee. Um, you know, you, they've got grinders paired with them. So, you know, it's. Yeah. Uh, it's they're really lovely machines and to make good really like you know amazing uh, coffee at home you know they're, they're the kind of best bits of kit to have and and should you only uh, you only drink espresso you don't go for the flat no, white I, or anything like that oh uh, yes yeah, so, no i i have a um you know so espresso is the base for the drink and i i drink yeah. um like an oat cortado which is a you know double yeah, shot yeah. of espresso with a small bit of uh oat milk so yeah yeah you know, i you know it's uh I play around with stuff. I, I played around with a, a filter brewer a few weeks ago and it made amazing coffee. Um, and, you know, just drinking coffee without milk, um, just, and it's a slightly slower brew process. So the flavors come through differently and you can try different coffees through it. So I'm kind of experimenting and learning a lot at the moment um, and just having some fun with it. Uh, do you always, should you, you don't always have milk or? No, not always. No. No, no. and, and again, you know, playing around with that sort of V60, that you know, yeah. um, the filter brew style is, right. is sort of opening me up to different flavor ranges, which is nice. Yeah, I like the V60. I also posted a little video on LinkedIn of me doing a little V60. Yeah. Over. Yeah. Is that what you use at home? You, you got a V60. So, so I've got a little Gaggia coffee machine. Oh, yes. So yeah. it's is like, it, is, it, is it the classic? Yeah. So that's, um, that's what I started with. That's exactly what I had. Yeah, my like a coffee. silver one, yeah. a little silver yeah. one. They're yeah, fantastic little machines. Yeah, great little machine, little thing for the milk I can heat up. Yeah, it's perfect. And because I'm well, apart from now actually, because often I'm 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 in my office, um, I, I maybe make one or two coffees a day on it for me and my wife in the morning, and that's yeah. all the use it gets. Um, but in the it's getting a bit more use now, obviously. But in the cupboard, I've got an Aero Press, which I like to use. Uh, I've got a V60, I've got a French press, and nice. and then I've got a little scales because I did chemistry at university, and I'm yeah. kind of you think well, you know, making coffee is a little bit like chemistry. You know, you can play around with the time and the weight yeah. and how much coffee yeah. you use, and it makes me feel all scientific. <laughs> so. Well, and and you've kind of hit on the the most overlooked but possibly most important bit of kit, which is a set of scales. Yeah, and. You know, that's the that's the one addition to most people's uh, coffee setup, regardless of, of what they're using, that will make a huge difference in, in how yeah, the yeah. coffee tastes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I love it. I love it. I probably drink too much. Well, in fact, we love it so much that, and this is how we connected, I got all my, my team a subscription to your coffee, which that's right. um, I do have here, actually, which we might as well show everyone. Uh, there we go. Amazing. I mean, it's doing, it's yeah. really good. It's really good. Thank you. Yeah. Pleasure. Uh, it's one of those things in the office where we, for some reason, we all like coffee and, you know, we get like a nice, a nice bag and there's a coffee shop downstairs. So people mix it up a little bit, yeah. but then everyone's at home and they're like, you know, some people are on their own, some people have got families. And so it's a bit of a mix. Um, and as well as our kind of like regular daily video call, it's nice to have a little shared kind of thing. <laughs> yes, we'll have the yeah. same bag. A little routine. Yeah. 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 It's been it's been really nice actually so yeah okay oh, I'm, I'm glad it's going down well no it's great so it's interesting so just to sum up almost your, your career and a lot of people that never quite look at this but when you 
when you when you're at school and you go to uni and after uni people a lot of people feel like they they should know exactly what they want to do with their lives and yeah. almost know know their path and it's not until you speak to people and find out about their careers that you realize that it's it's fine to try things and people go on different paths and stuff and yeah. you know i mean for you you're on your third career let's say yeah. you yeah. know for me um i'm on my second i did fashion yeah. and manufacturing now i'm in wow. the recruitment sector maybe podcasting is my is my next <laughs> full-time my next career world, yeah. i'm doing both um so i think yeah the message for, for me like to a lot of young people is like it's it's cool to try different things and not no, you don't have to know exactly what you want to do with your whole life. Yeah, I completely agree. And and there's no there's no right answer. You know, there's yeah. yeah I've always sort of um, taken the view of w w I'll try something, and if it feels right, you keep going with it. And if it and if it does it doesn't feel right or it starts to feel uncomfortable, you change because there's no there's no, no nothing wrong with changing direction. Yeah, uh, you change your direction of travel if it feels good. If it you know if it's adding to your life and you're adding to others then great continue on with it but there's no sort of i must be a you know whatever a marketeer or a banker or a recruitment specialist for my whole career because yeah. you know pe people change you, you grow older you change your views on life and you know there's there's no there's no harm in changing definitely it's interesting you made a transition from elite sport which most people find really very difficult uh into a you know a, um a more traditional career let's say um because yeah. sport doesn't last a huge amount of time right yeah um and then and then um working for big organizations you decide to set up your own your own firm well what was what was the harder the harder thing to do um i, I definitely think um so you know sport for me was always uh, because you're sort of in control of your own you know you're, you're working with coaches and nutritionists and um and i was very lucky i had a very very supportive family um that you know you can just focus on yourself really which is a reasonably selfish thing to do and then going into corporates where the dynamic is much different it's bigger you're working in teams and you know that shift for me was was much harder and, it, and it, there was a lot more of an adjustment into that corporate lifestyle um even though you know the the knowledge you take from university sets you up in terms of um, a functional skill it's that working, you know, that working with just lots of different cross-functional people with different backgrounds who may not necessarily have the same mindset to you or the same objectives, all those sorts of things. And, I, and it was a bit of a culture shock, really. Yeah. Um, so that, that was quite a big adjustment for me. Um, and, you know, probably one that I maybe never quite adjusted just to two throughout my whole corporate career because it was always a bit of a challenge to I like to try and do things you know I guess quickly um, but corporates don't move quickly yeah. Um, yeah so it was always that balancing act of just because I might be able to you know I, I might think I know the answer quite often more often than not I didn't know the answer but you, you, you set off in a direction of travel but you have to take a whole lot of people with you or you're part of a bigger team and um, I think that was that's a constant learning for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that was probably one of the biggest challenges. And then, you know, setting up a, a small company, again, having worked in those big organizations, you get to apply all of that stuff you've learned. So yes, it's yeah. difficult because you are doing everything, literally, you know, finance, marketing, admin, sales, <laughs> you, know, yeah. you, you know, as well Cleaning, as I do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, everything, yeah. you know, product development, all sorts. Um, yeah. And again, I'm very lucky that, that my business partner, we're, we're very similar mindset he's got a mountain bike background oh, very sporty okay. um, right. and he's also you know we both had coffee and cycling related passions Brilliant. um and and when we met we just had it off and it was it was a very easy choice so yeah um yeah. again i'm very lucky to have a, a fantastically supportive business partner so that makes it a lot easier yeah um, yeah and did you know so when did you meet you met recently and then yeah, uh, probably. So I, uh, I kind of formed formed the company late twenty, uh, sort of summer twenty eighteen, okay. and I met Phil late twenty eighteen, early twenty nineteen, um, and you know, and you know, everything is better when you've got more, you know more than just one person focused on it. So the company yeah. really started to accelerate when when Phil came on board and just Brilliant. shared the workload and came with a load of creative ideas as well. Yeah, has it been has it been difficult? doing something together with someone like as a, as a co-founder because i guess you spend more time with him than you do with your family 
yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah, I do see a lot of Phil, and it's it's. Um, I think because we're because he's been a you know a, an athlete as well. We we have that similar mindset of okay, I, and I know that if he if he suggests an idea or, or whatever it is, or if we we agree on something, we're very comfortable leaving it with the other person to crack on with because yeah, yeah. we kind of know that that that's good, that shared background of okay, it'll happen, we'll get it done. Um, so it's actually been uh, really quite enjoyable um, awesome. to to get on and do it with Phil. So yeah. Right. And what was the plan then? So did you start roasting or you started to open a coffee shop? What, what's what been the, the journey? Uh, yeah, so so I, if, I, if I look back to when I actually started, I, I assessed the market and, you know, a few people who I kicked their uh, idea around with were like, oh, coffee's really, like, you know, it's really popular. There's a lot of, you know, there's hundreds of coffee brands. Um, and I said, yeah, there is. There's a lot of coffee brands, but there's a, the market's dominated by big companies selling um coffee beans that are of let's say below below high grade <laughs> <Yeah. know>. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and luckily now there's a there's there's a number of companies like us who have identified that there's there's some amazing coffee farmers um in brazil costa rica peru rwanda who produce really really high grade beans um and by roasting them uh, light a light roast it the flavors come out are quite incredible um and and that's where the gap in the market is is this you know it's called third wave coffee you know whatever it's basically it's allowing the the high quality flavors to come out of the coffee as opposed to um the sort of medium to dark roast coffees which pick up a lower grade bean and because they're a lower grade they they have to be roasted darker which make, makes them okay you know, if, if you cook anything for a long time, it starts to take on the flavor of being overcooked. Yeah. And yeah. it's the same with a coffee bean. If you, you know, if you lightly cook something, the flavor of the natural product will still be retained. And and that's where, you know, that was the um, part of the market. Having done my research, I looked at it and went, yeah, okay, there's these big companies that will be, that have been there for, you know, over a hundred years in, in many cases. Um, and that's fine. They'll continue to be there, but there is a growing appreciation for, uh, higher quality, uh, lighter roasted, more flavoursome coffee, and that's where that's where we've placed ourselves. Amazing, amazing. Did you have you gone and visited these farms and stuff? No, I haven't yet. Our um, our head roaster goes out and, and oh, he okay. meets them, and, and we yeah we we try and work directly with um, as many farms as we can. Again, looking mm -hmm. at the supply chain, there's um, you know there's a lot of farmers who just get given a you know a fair trade price, which is actually pretty low right. um for, for but we go in and we work with high quality high grade farms and we pay them a premium for their product because it's worth yeah. it yeah um and yes that effect, you know that means there's more cost in the supply chain but by working direct we can save a little bit with you know taking out the import exporter yeah um and ultimately we know we're getting a better product and for me it all starts with again this is you know one of the learnings from my time in in corporates is you have to start with a fantastic product yeah. because if you don't have that underpinning everything, you're always going to be sort of backpedaling and, and not really making it, making a good go of it. So we spend a lot of time getting the product right. And then we can start to talk about, okay, how are we starting to promote it, which is the phase we're in now. And we had a, we had a pop-up cafe on Brighton seafront uh, last summer okay. as part of a, um, there's a, a 50 meter open air pool being built down there in the next couple of years. So we, oh, nice. on that, on that site, um, we, there's a, a pop-up bar and a pop-up cafe. So it was yeah. amazing to be down there and, and get feedback on the coffee. Um, and, you know, again, Phil and I have had many conversations where we want to take the brand as, uh, you know, it's exactly what you're saying at the start of the call, which is yes, we're a coffee company, but we're about content and because of our love of sports cycling and, and sailing and, you know, mountain bike and BMX, ultimately we want to be supporting athletes teams with the coffee brand so that we're doing, you know, we're supporting the grassroots and that kind of stuff. And that, that allows us to create content and, and do the yeah. things that we love, but it's underpinned by a great coffee product. Brilliant. Brilliant. So, so you're going to, so you started, so with, with so producing beans, which you'll sell, wholesale yep. retail etc and then yep. and then also also physical coffee shops 
Yes. Yeah. So um, again, you know, it's every, every day is a, I learn something. And when we started out, we thought, great, we've got, you know, this lovely coffee um, and we thought cafes are just going to you know, beat a path to our door. Um, you know, lesson number one was they, they don't, and it's really hard work. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, we had to adapt very quickly. And again, so we sat down and went, right, this isn't working for us. Um, where, where is a gap in the market that, that drink a lot of coffee, but don't necessarily appreciate what good coffee is. And we went right offices. That's, you know, that's for us as the, as the sweet spot. So we pivoted um, very early in 2019 to targeting offices um, and, and so, you know, selling wholesale coffee to offices yeah. and saying, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll guarantee to improve your coffee offer um, either through customer service. Cause that's the biggest part of our business is, is building a relationship and providing customer service. Um, but also having a very good product. So that's where we initially actually really started to grow the business. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and have left cafes, you know, cafes are great because they're very passionate owners, but they'll, they'll take their time to research. And when we do get approached, we'll, you know, put our beans up for sampling and, yeah. and if someone makes a decision, they prefer our beans, that's great. But um, there's a, there's a bigger opportunity for us in in offices, which is where we're focused. Brilliant, brilliant. And then the, the, the let's say the B two C offering, so the subscription coffee. Yeah. Um, how did that come about? Uh, well, uh, through the focus on the offices, weirdly, uh, with the with the coronavirus change and everyone working from home, um, all of our office coffee customers um, said, "Look, obviously no one's going into the office anymore, so our wholesale business almost uh, stopped overnight." Um, and we, we had, as part of our plan this year, to launch a subscription model. Um, we just pulled that forward um, right. and said, okay, everyone's working from home. We need to pick up the demand we've lost from offices with, yeah. you know, people. And, and, you know, exactly your story. You, you've bought coffee for your uh, colleagues. Yeah. And that's happened a lot. Um, we, we got our subscription service launched, uh, I think, three weeks ago. And, you know, luckily, fortunately, we've done some fun promotions with it and it's, it's been picked up really, really well. So brilliant. Yeah. It's a nice time it's, to innovate. Hey, when we're at home. Well, it is. Yeah. And, you know, thinking time and time to focus and yeah, you get disrupted with family stuff and, uh, and that sort of stuff. But, you know, you can, you know, I'm, I don't, I'm not averse to working into the night to get something done and, yeah, you know, no, it's, it's good. Uh, There's always a, every, every yeah. cloud, sorry to put, um, <laughs> a little pun on your on your brand but every cloud has a silver lining right <laughs> and, well that's exactly it and and that's what you know on, on our website we say every cup has a silver lining and that's you know and that just to pick up on the direct trade relationships because we're trying to support the you know the farmers and pay them a, a, a bit more than they would get otherwise and just working with the communities and building relationships with our customers and that's it's you know coffee stimulates conversation and relationships and that's what we're trying to build here is you know Definitely. And that's where the silver lining comes in. And yeah, yeah working yeah. from home does have a silver lining. It's, it's forced us to adapt again. And, you know, if the, the last sort of 18, 24 months, it's been far from plain sailing. Um, but the, the common theme is adapt to whatever's happening. Yeah, no, very true. Very true. What's the supply lines like now from for, for the for the beans? Have they, have they been yeah, affected a bit? Or? They're, they're OK. Uh, they're OK at the moment. Um, so the, the coffee comes in in a, in a green bean format um, and there's there's decent stocks uh you know so there's no there's no immediate risk of um you know because because coffee beans are a um, seasonal product so the you say in uh, costa rica for example their picking season was um sort of early february um okay. you know so there's there's stocks of that product that are arriving um okay. and you know quite often we'll we'll pick up say you know half or a, a significant amount of a farm's crop and Oh, okay. you know, we'll hold that or we'll buy it in conjunction with some other companies and, and yeah. away we go. So yeah, there's, there's a decent amount of, of good quality coffee that we can, we can source. Awesome. For someone now that's working from home and used to just wandering to the, uh, to the coffee machine at work, um, it's a yeah. bit of a minefield, like what to buy, what to use, yeah. like what, what for, for like a little novice, what would you recommend they kick off with? Um, I think, you know, it all comes down to, like, like everything in life, time and money. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, an e a really easy way to get started is exactly what you would you do with your V60. Um, yeah. You know, uh, you can you can get a um, a plastic V60 brewer for about 
six pounds. Yeah. Um, and the filters are, you know, you get a hundred filters for a few pounds as well. And th then it's just, okay. And you don't have to buy a special kettle to pour over or scales, but that'll get you started. Uh, you know, a heat dessert spoon of coffee is about the right amount for one cup. Yeah. Um, and you just play around with it. And, you know, in terms of simplicity, that's a really easy way, cost effective way to get into it. And you can get yeah. really, really nice cups of coffee doing, you know, doing it like that. Um, right. You know, all the way up, you know, I, I love an AeroPress um, if you need to get out for your daily walk. So Phil, uh, my business partner, did a great video uh, last week. He went for a walk. He lives on a farm near Lewis, took his AeroPress with him and, and did, took, did a video of just to simple because AeroPress can be a little bit technical, but he simplified it really nicely. And um, that's a great way. And, and whenever, you know, historically, when we've gone on holidays or cycling trips or sailing trips, or whatever, I'll always take the AeroPress because really? it makes yeah. really good coffee. Yeah. And it's, it's lightweight brilliant. and you can just throw it in your bag. Yeah. And it's really robust. It's great. For anyone yeah. that doesn't know, it looks a bit like a test tube. Um, I think they're only like 15 quid or something, 20 quid maybe. Yeah. They're, they're, they're about, they're about uh, 28 or 30, I think. Yeah. Yeah. They're brilliant. Yeah. I was actually down uh, in Lewis. Um, I ran the Stenning Stinger trail run. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you've done it uh, in, uh, it must be February now. Uh, February, yeah, February now. Uh, uh, it was pretty muddy, if anyone's keen. Yes. Get on it. I bet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, can't, I can't run, so I, I, I tend to stay away from those sorts of running events. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool, the Aeropress, amazing. Well, look, thank you so much for, uh, for joining me from the car. And uh, yeah, it's my pleasure. It's, it's great to hear, you know, people that are pivoting and like always thinking about different things to do. <laughs> um you know when these unexpected things from mother nature hit us but um it's great yeah how can uh, how can people find you if they want to get a subscription and, and all that stuff uh so the the website's the best place so whitecloudcoffee.co.uk um is where we we retail all our uh, products cool. um we do home subscriptions office subscriptions and if you want a bit of sort of light-hearted entertainment our instagram is uh, at whitecloudcoffee and Phil and I, are, we're, again, this, this extra time, we're putting sort of fun videos up. We're trying to get one up uh, a week of, uh, nice. of how we're living our lives and uh, making fun with, you know, having some fun with coffee at the moment. Amazing. Awesome. Well, thanks again. Um, and uh, keep up the good work. And I look forward to getting my next bag. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate awesome. it. Pleasure. Good to speak to you.